You're listening to an Airwave Media Podcast. I feel like who Art Ed? Try to slice it. Who Art Ed? Mr. Wood, Art Ed, me. <laughs> yeah. Either way, it, it's ambiguous. It works on so many levels. I know. That's off to a great start. Welcome to Who Arted, where we explore visual arts in an audio medium. I'm your host, Kyle Wood, and today we're going to be looking at George Surratt's Sunday on La Grande Jatte. Now, just a reminder, if you're listening on Amazon Music, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, any of those platforms that support episode-specific cover art, you can see the image of the work we're discussing right there in your podcast app. And of course, while you're looking in your podcast app, please do me a favor and leave a rating or review to help others find the show. Now on to our actual topic, George Surratt. In 1894, George Surratt began going out to this idyllic little island away from the urban center of Paris. It was a place where people of various classes would relax. While the image is of people at leisure, Surratt was anything but relaxed. He was a disciplined artist on a mission to create a work that would be significant in art history. He spent years developing this piece. He made dozens of preparatory sketches to work out the composition and the technique. While the 1890s was the heyday for Impressionists, Surratt was part of a new breed. Some consider him a post-Impressionist or neo-Impressionist. Today, his technique is called pointillism, but in his day, Seurat preferred the term divisionism. He was dividing the image into discrete bits, carefully painted, uniform dots of paint like pixels that make up our digital images today. While his process was careful and handcrafted, Seurat was fascinated by science. He developed his approach after reading the works of scientists like Michel Eugene Chevreau, and Ogden Rood. One of the key concepts that Surratt latched onto had to do with how color is perceived in relation to its surroundings. He was reading about uh, some trouble people had restoring tapestries because they couldn't simply die to match a piece. They had to account for the surrounding colors. Surratt's idea was that dividing the image into these discrete dots of color and paying careful attention to the interaction of one color juxtaposed or placed next to another color, the painter could arrange combinations that would heighten the contrast and make the colors more vibrant. Surratt wanted to make this particular piece stand out even more, making it all the more vivid with a colorful painted frame of dots around the perimeter, and that was offset by a clean white painted wooden frame. That's how it stands today in the Art Institute of Chicago where it's displayed. Surratt was fascinated by the interaction of contrasting colors, but his work is steeped in other contrasts as well. It's rendered in a way that seems rigid, uniform, cold, almost mechanical, And yet, the subject is people at rest and at play in the park. We see a woman dressed in what appears to be very fancy attire, and yet she's walking a pet monkey, because apparently that's what sophisticated people might do back in the 19th century. (laughs) Seriously, pet monkey, pretty rad. But to my mind, this painting is full of seeming sort of contradictions or at least contrasting points. I mean, there are these people who seem sort of relaxed and carefree, and at the same time, there's a small child who's looking out confronting the viewer. It was exhibited with the Impressionists, which I associate with that sort of quick dashed off. I mean, it's the impression of what was in front of them, and yet it was so carefully and meticulously rendered. The subject is people in the park sort of at rest from the modern urban industrial age of Paris, and yet it's rendered in this way that seems cold and almost mechanical. It's full of organic forms composed of neat and precise dots. Sunday on La Grande Jatte is a sort of companion piece to his other painting, Bathers at Asnieres. I don't know why I'm suddenly doing like a Spanish accent on that. 
I don't know, the bathers piece. Now, the bathers are the working class on the left bank, while Sunday shows the bourgeoisie on the right bank. If we imagine the two paintings side by side, almost like they were a diptych, the people on both banks would be looking out at each other. The bather in the water is looking out of frame. It seems like he's calling out. Within that painting on its own, it would feel a little unbalanced, as it leads the eye out of the composition. But if we consider the bathers and Sunday, like I said, almost as a diptych, the bather appears to be calling out to the people on the other bank. This action is mirrored, in a way, by the woman fishing on the Sunday painting. In both compositions, we see this mirroring, this sort of symmetry with the poses of figures laying on the ground. Interestingly, while the bathers are soaked in bright sunlight, the bougie people on the Sunday on the Grand Jat are in the shadows of the trees. Now, Surat was interested in the notion of people of different social classes meeting and mingling in this bucolic retreat. He wanted to show the contrast of those people of different social stratas um, coming together in this park. But there's this beautiful sort of symmetry and harmonious balance that's achieved between these two works and these paintings and this sort of juxtaposition of these different people. Just as there's this harmony in the arrangement of the contrasting colors within his work. And one other contrast, I mean, this piece was quintessentially modern. I mean, he was trying to make a modern piece, but at the same time, he was inspired by a historical piece. Surat was inspired by a relief sculpture on the Parthenon, but he didn't want it to be historical. He wanted to paint everyday people, but with a creative approach meticulously rendered to elevate an ordinary Sunday afternoon into something historically significant. And I'd say it worked. I mean, here we are looking at it 125 years later. This concludes this week's episode of Who Arted, part of the Airwave Media Podcast Network. If you found this tolerable, please leave a rating or review on your favorite podcast app. You can find images of the work being discussed this week and every week on social media at Who Arted Podcast on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. And of course, on the website, whoartedpodcast.com. Podcast done.